The Life of Emil Zola stars Paul Muni as Emil Zola, famous French writer, and it was released in 1937 and picked up the Best Picture Academy Award in 1938. The film primarily follows what has become known as the Dreyfus Affair, which is a man in the French military who was accused of being a spy. Uh, he was falsely accused of being a spy and sent to prison on an island, basically left to rot. And it became quite apparent that the government had covered it up, covered up the, the fact that they'd cocked up, they'd made a mistake, and rather than admitting it, they, well, the military, I say, I say the government, I really mean is the military, the military had made a mistake, and rather than owning up to it, they covered it up. And they were willing to let a man rot in prison rather than bring, bring the, the truth to light. Now, Emile Zola was a man, as I say, famous French writer who, who wrote about a lot of things in society and went on a lot of crusades and he was picked up to write about this one. He didn't really want to. He was kind of coming to the end of his career at that point. He wasn't that interested in picking up a new crusade. But the more he looked into the case, the more he felt compelled to kind of bring the truth to life. And as a result, was often called a traitor himself for doing so until the truth eventually came out. Now, the film is all about that. It follows that and... When it's following that, once it gets to that, it's actually quite interesting as a you know courtroom drama slash biopic. One of the problems with it is it takes so long to get there. Like that's the story that we're kind of following. Now they called the film The Life of Emil Zola. So what we get is the first half hour of the film giving us this protracted kind of what other things has he done in his life? You know, where, how did he get to where he's getting to? And it's, I don't care, really don't care. I just like, once we get to the Dreyfus, like this film should start with Dreyfus being found out and then sent to prison. And then his wife knocking on the door of Emile Zola. And then we should learn everything that we need to know about Emile Zola through how he interacts with her, with the military, with everyone else surrounding this case. What we don't need is a half hour, 35 minute, essentially tacked on bit at the front end of the film to, to show us snapshots of his life so that one, we can call the film the life of Emile Zola and two, we can fill you in on who this man is essentially despite the fact that we know who this man is just by how he handles the Dreyfus affair. The fact that he's willing to go out on a limb for this man when nobody else will tells us all we need to know about who Emile Zola is. So, so much of this film is a complete waste of time. As I say, once the Dreyfus affair kicks off, once we get into that stuff, I'm entertained. I'm along for the ride. I want to see where it goes. I'm invested. It, it, it's just takes far too long to get there as we wade through a load of unnecessary kind of biopic nonsense. Performances are all pretty decent. There's nothing spectacular, like nothing I would consider Oscar worthy, to be honest. Mooney is, is perfectly fine in the role of Zola, although I do feel like he hams it up a little bit with his French kind of tics. <laughs> Just... This is how a French man would talk, so I'm going to talk like this. Obviously not doing a fine job of it myself there, but yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. The performances, I say, are fine. There's nothing about the performances here that are bad. I, I think that the guy who plays Dreyfus in it actually probably does the best job across the board as this man who quietly tries to keep his dignity as he rot, rots away in prison but holds out for the day that he might once again get to see his wife. All that is, is, is perfectly fine and perfectly well played. It's nice to see Gloria Holden pop up here as Zola's wife. I, I know her from Dracula's Daughter, the universal Dracula. She played Dracula's Daughter in the, the direct sequel to Dracula. Yeah, she, she, she was, it was pleasant to see her. She was pretty good, quite sedate. She, she didn't ham it up the way a lot of the actresses of this generation did, you know. She's, pretty relaxed, pretty chilled, and, and I, I respect that. But as I say, performance-wise, there's nothing in here that stands out as like, oh, that's a, that's a, 
absolutely mega performance. It's it's serviceable. Most of this film is is serviceable. I would chalk it up today as like so, something like the life of David Gale, you know, a courtroom drama like that where it's it's well made, it's well acted, it's a good watch, but it's it's that's it. It just so happens that yeah, in 1938 this was the kind of movie that got your best picture. So yeah, did it deserve it? No, I don't think so. It could be said of so many of the best picture winners, to to be perfectly honest, but. It was fine. I'm glad I've seen it. Will I watch it again? No. But yeah, if, if, you, if you've got an interest in history, if if you've heard of the Dreyfus Affair, which I have, you know, I'd, I'd, I didn't know what it was until I watched this movie. But th there were there's, there's been various political movies that I've seen over the years that have referenced the Dreyfus Affair, where I've gone like, the Dreyfus Affair? Oh, that sounds intriguing. What's that? Well, if you want to know, here's your answer. The Dreyfus Affair. It's, it's all covered in this film. I just wish... I just wish the film had been called The Dreyfus Affair rather than The Life of Emil Zola. Kick away that, that first half hour, half hour and you've got something that, that would probably get an extra star from me, to be honest. It would be much shorter and much more interesting. So, yeah. The Life of Emil Zola. Best picture winner of 1938. Have you seen it? If so, what did you think about it? If you know of any other movies that have been made around this particular point in history around the Dreyfus Affair, let me know about it because I do find it to be quite an interesting subject. Was it dealt with in the best possible way with this film? No, maybe not. But maybe there's another film out there that has done a better job of it. If there is, let me know about it down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this review and until next time, cracking.